jealousy and ambition, you find this harmony, and wicked things of every kind have been done. Whereas the wisdom that comes down from above is essentially something pure. It also makes for peace, and is kindly and considerate. It is full of compassion, and shows itself by doing good. Nor is there any trace of partiality or hypocrisy in it. Peacemakers, when they work for peace, sow the seeds which will bear fruit and holiness. Where do these wars and battles between yourselves first start? Isn't it precisely in the desired fighting inside your own selves? You want something, but you haven't got it, so you're prepared to kill. You have an ambition that you cannot satisfy, so you fight to get away by force. Why you don't have what you want is because you don't pray for it. When you do pray and don't get it, it's because you have not prayed properly. You have prayed for something to indulge your own desires. This is the word of the Lord. The gospel affirmation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Through the good news call to share the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. first, he must make him 
themselves lost the gold and silver the gold. He then took a little child, set him in front of them, put his arms around him and said to them, Anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. These readings are quite confusing in many ways because we have uh, plotting and violence in the first reading by the goddess, and they have a very twisted mindset. Oh, we can do anything to good people because they trust in God so that everything will be all right in the end. Fortunately, we do not live times of persecution, we may live in times where the gospel is often not understood, sometimes not even proclaimed, but we don't live in fear of our lives in the main. It was often said that prophets and martyrs got stoned twice, one for proclaiming God's presence and their trust in him, literally stoning, um, and then secondly, in sorrow and reflection, even the church would erect great memorials to these prophets, martyrs, and saints who had had the courage to proclaim in their time that message that we should love God and love our neighbour with all our hearts. In the second reading, we go back to the first Mass I celebrated with you, reminding us that our lives are usually marked by original sin, and that it pains me to say that, but I'm just being realistic. Um, I wish we were known as a community of original innocence, but we are very conscious, or at least I hope you are, um, in spiritual reflection upon our lives that there is much not right there. <coughs> there are thoughts against others, there's gossip, there's all kinds of things which are not what our Lord would wish our lives to be. The wars and battles between yourself first start where? They start within us when we become judge and when we set ourselves up to see people through our eyes only. And then finally we come to the uh, gospel which I don't know how, usually the first reading in the Gospel have a common theme. But today, um, it doesn't really. But it's a fascinating Gospel. And Mark, over the last few weeks, has been trying to explain to us how Jesus was continually banging his head against the wall in reference to his followers. Not the people who wanted to stone him to death and crucify him, but to those who were his friends, to those who aspired to follow in his footsteps. And so today we have um, them being taught by our Lord. What a great privilege that must have been. And they understood nothing. They just weren't getting it. Our Lord was saying, there's a, there's a big mistake in Christianity these days. Oh, it's all common sense, and we just have to live a good life. <laughs> well, don't ask the prophet 
as the martyrs and the saints that because following Christ came with cost. The devout Catholic faith has no cost to it, then it's not truly authentic. And so our Lord's trying to teach them how to be strong, how to realize that he's going to suffer. And he says to them, uh, what were you not talking about today? After the, after the teaching session, when we were just walking along, what was it that was preoccupying your minds? Well, I don't, none of them could answer, because they knew exactly what they had been talking about was anything other than our Lord would want them to. I'm better than you. You're not as good as me. Sounds similar to some things in our lives. It doesn't mind. The judging of others, the apostles themselves. I will be first. I'm the greatest. Our Lord's just been talking about weakness and being servants. And they're like, me, 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 like the track movie. Pick me, pick me. It's got nothing to do with the gospel. Christ's teaching. He's teaching. Be humble. Be meek. In the world's view, if you won't use the word meek, what would normal people think of meekness? Liver bellied? Koshola? Non argumentative? You see those characteristics in the prophets and the saints and the martyrs. We should always remember that Christ came to disturb the comfortable and to comfort the disturbed. That's his approach. And finally, what I find these readings fairly hard is I'm going to leave you with a question to ask yourselves during the week. It all comes out of this, even the apostles not really getting it. Do we get it? But Christ ultimately challenges them to reflect on how they are perceived. Meekness to our Lord is to put up with the roughness, the ignorance, the pettiness of the apostles. With great forbearance, it doesn't condone it, it tells them all. But his meekness is they haven't got it yet. So we'll spend more time, more instruction. You're thinking, I hope the priest's not going to make us a real God <laughs> The final reflection I want to give you is that it ended with a child. And if we were, you know, we've been hearing about the optics of things. This week. If we were to think, what is the optic of my life? Our Lord calls us away from me, 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 from childishness to childhood. We have to get those really distinguished. In a child, if we find a lot which is not uh, good. Fortunately, I've never had children, <laughs> but I did have to grow up with my siblings, and I was the best of brothers either. But in children, sometimes we find um, a lack of understanding. They don't know where anything comes from, it just lands on a plate. The, the, the shoes just appear. <laughs> so there might be a, a bit of ungratefulness or um, even there. But with a the child, there could be, I want my 
which reflects the best of human nature. We pray for peace and mutual respect in each community throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Let us remember all those of our parish community and loved ones who are sick and suffering in mind and body, especially Barry Hall, Ori Khan's friend, Pat Ryder, and Paul. And ask God to send them healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Let us pray for all those who have died and gone to God's eternal kingdom, especially John Colson. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We ask Mary our mother to pray with us and we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Bless us our God, and bless us.
to be the cause of this world's your son. Grant the day we were united with your son in the death by his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your tears. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, as fast as Jesus, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have peace with throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to each other. We may praise and glorify you for your Son.